The mission of the Utah Avalanche Center is to save lives for people who live, work, and recreate in avalanche terrain. And so what we do is put out an avalanche forecast each day, and that's sort of our main product, where we take all this information, to distill it down, to give people the information they need before they head out the door and go into avalanche terrain. Today we're going to tell you exactly what it takes to put together that avalanche forecast. So you can't just produce these avalanche forecasts from the office. You've got to get out into the mountains and feel what's going on out in the snowpack. You have to learn what kind of avalanche dragging you're dealing with and learn where that uh, dragon is distributed throughout the backcountry. You do this by traveling around on skis, snowboards, snowmobiles, and snowshoes to try to sniff out where these avalanche problems live and, and just how dangerous they are out there. So when we get out in the backcountry, we look for obvious clues. This includes recent avalanches, collapsing, cracking, heavy snowfall, wind-drifted snow, and rapid thaw in the springtime. Not only do we have to pay attention to the obvious clues, but we have to look at more detailed information that's happening within the snowpack itself. We need to dig down and study all the different layers, the different grain types, the size of the grains, the temperature gradients that are going on in the snowpack. All this combined with uh, doing stability tests gives us an idea of how these different layers are interacting with each other and just how dangerous they are gonna be. So I'm gonna cut out this column, 90 centimeters across, 30 centimeters up the slope. Do an extend column test and I'll tap on it harder and harder until it goes. 10 times from my wrist and then from my just pops right out of there, right on that layer. I can just shove my arm into it. This is a nasty, weak layer, very easy to trigger, and it's gonna be a long time before this stabilizes. That's the bad news. The Utah Avalanche Center acts as a hub between professionals who work out in Avalanche Train, the media, the public, and what we do is provide this, this avenue of two-way information to, to share with folks so that they can stay alive and hopefully come home at the end of the day. I also love the indoor part of our job where we actually put out the forecasts. It's always a little rough when the alarm clock goes off at 3.15 in the morning, but by the time I get to work at 4 a.m., I'm normally wide awake and my mind's buzzing and I'm ready to start trying to put together all the pieces that I need to to create our avalanche forecast. We're really lucky because we're co-located at the National Weather Service, so when I walk in the door at 4 a.m., there are a lot of smart people who have been here since midnight and already come up with the mountain weather forecast that I need to use to make my avalanche forecast. And then I also start gathering any snowpack information that's come in from our observers who posted observations last night, from the ski areas as they arrive at work at 6 a.m. very often, and also look at all the remote weather stations that we have in Utah that um, will give us snowpack weather, wind, and temperature information. 50 knot wind, when is that? Saturday morning? Yeah. Oh yeah, just in time for the weekend. <laughs> right, yeah, exactly. Uh, and also the inc the increasing freezing level there. Mm -hmm. uh, All the red flags. I know it. I I mean I think we may be into it could be a warning criteria this weekend, Bruce. And finally, we start typing our forecast, and the pressure's on. We've got less than two hours to get out a full forecast that includes the weather information, the snowpack information our feeling of the avalanche problems for the day, our danger rating, and we always try to save time so we can mix graphs, charts, and photos into that forecast. And the duties for the forecaster of the day aren't over yet at 7.30 once the forecasts are out. Then we start working on our social media, which includes sending out Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Another tool that we use is Twitter. And we use this out in the field to produce real-time avalanche information so that when we hear or see something going on out in the backcountry, we can distribute this information like that. 
So basically, we're all natural detectives. We're gathering information and clues on the snowpack and weather. Then we take that information and we give it back to the public in a way they can understand and in a media form they can understand. By our community working together, it helps keep, keep people on top of the greatest snow on earth instead of buried underneath it.